Hi everyone, hope you guys are doing great. So I have been using Cherish OS based on Android 12 for almost a month now. And I think this would be the first ROM that I've used for so long in my Redmi Note 10 Pro. And there was also an update recently which was version 3.8 and it came with some really good improvements. Well, that's what we're going to see today. We'll take a look at all the pros and cons and we'll also see how well this ROM is performing with Redmi Note 10 Pro. So let's get the video started. Starting with the Android version and the security update, this is running on Android 12 L and the security update is of June 2022, so that's perfect here. And like other Android 12 custom ROMs, you get all the basic features like material you theming, improved notification and privacy settings, and yes, you also get those stock wallpapers as well, which is definitely a good thing here. And you also get the most important Google applications like Google Dialer, Google Messaging, Android Auto, well you can download other Google applications from Play Store if you need them, so that's not an issue here. And what makes this ROM different is that it provides you a separate section known as Cherish Settings where you get some really good customization options like changing stats bar options or modifying quick settings. I actually like this theming section here where you get to change the settings layout to Oxygen OS 11, 12 or Cherish Normal and Clean and this is really cool. And there is no issue with changing theme from light to dark or vice versa. This is working absolutely fine. Well you might find it a bit laggy sometimes but overall it is working fine. Monet engine, icon style and shape are working fine as well and you should not face any issues here. And if you go to this button section, you get this really cool option known as volume steps where you can customize the volume steps for everything like alarm, media notification or voice call. So for example, if I set the media steps to 5, then you can go from 0 to 100 media volume in 5 steps by pressing the volume up button 5 times. So this is a really cool option here. And other options like animations or notification related settings are more or less similar to other custom ROMs like Evolution X or Dofest OS and they are working fine. And yes, you also get this unlimited Google photo storage which is great. So this was all about these Cherish settings. Now let's take a look at some major improvements that came with version 3.8. And the first important feature that came with this version is the ANX camera. Well, you don't need to flash it separately now. And even though it is there, which is a great improvement I know, but we are still going to use Google camera, right? And apart from the addition of ANX camera, you also get Dolby Atmos, which is an amazing feature. And you get all these modes like movie, music, game and smart audio. And one thing I wanted to let you guys know that the sound will be set to smart audio by default and in some cases you might feel that the sound is not that great. So I would recommend you guys to change it to a different mode here to get it right. And the third important feature added to this update is related to system settings. So if you go to this updater, you have an option to apply the update locally. Well, let's wait for the new update to come and let's see how it performs. So these were some of the important features added in version 3.8 and I'm really glad they added all this. And there were some other improvements and bug fixes as well and if you want to read the whole changelog, I will leave a link in the video description. Now let's take a look at some other important features and let's start with the battery. So when it comes to battery backup, I have a like mixed opinion about this. But overall you get a good battery backup but it's not amazing. Idle drain is ok but not that much and if you are using Wi-Fi, you won't get a great battery backup. Playing games also consumes a lot of battery and on an average you should get like 4-6 to six hours of screen on time. Fast charging is supported as well and it takes an average of 1 hour and 40 minutes to completely charge the battery from 0 to 100% using the original charger. So this was all about battery. Now if we take a look at this safety net and wide one L1. This ROM passes the safety net test so you should be able to use the backing applications without any issues. And wide one L1 is supported as well so playing SD content should not be a problem. And if you talk about fingerprint sensor and the face unlock, both are pretty fast. But you might feel fingerprint sensor a bit sluggish sometimes but overall it's working fine. Now let's talk about this gaming performance. So you get this dedicated game space where the options are more or less similar to other Android 12 custom ROMs where you get an option to disable pop-up notifications or auto brightness or you can also block these full screen events. I actually played two different games. The first one was Battlegrounds Mobile India and the second one was War After. So with BGMI you get a decent performance. And if you talk about the graphics, you get smooth and balanced with ultra and SD with high and there is no support for SDR or anything about that. Actual performance is decent here, no complaints about it. And FPS varies between 30 and 40 and the gaming is mostly decent. Say 
and like I said I also played this War Doctor and the performance was decent here as well. You will get a bit higher FPS in this game but it's not a bigger improvement but the overall performance was really good. Eyes closed, eyes closed, like we're dreaming even when we're not. But you and me got a whole lot of meaning, I don't know how. But you and me just know how it feels when we're falling in love. And I also wanted to show you an important feature present in this ROM. So if you go to display settings, you get an option to prevent your screen from waking up accidentally which is a really good feature. Some users have been facing this issue with other Android 12 custom ROMs. Well, this option might be helpful in that case. So this was all about the good things here. Now let's talk about some of the issues I faced and we'll start with this auto brightness. So I faced this issue multiple times. So I thought to let you guys know about this. So if you disable this auto brightness and change it to manual, the brightness will still fluctuate. I started experiencing this issue with YouTube and I tried everything like restarting the phone and all, but this was still happening. And I know the addition of NX camera is a great improvement in version 3.8 but slow motion is still a problem. All other modes are working fine but as soon as you tap on this slow motion the camera application will automatically freeze. This was an issue with Pixel OS as well which comes with NX camera. Well you should definitely use Gcam as well to help with this slow motion issue. And I have been using this LMC 8.4 which is working absolutely fine. I will leave a link in the video description. And I will also show you some of the pictures I took with this uh, LMC 8.4 so that you have an idea how this camera application works. Another issue I faced was with this recent application menu. Well, this was not a frequent issue but yes, it happened multiple times where the menu suddenly stops responding and you won't be able to remove any application from this application tray. And I already mentioned about this battery backup, it is pretty average with this version. This was an issue with version 3.7 as well and it is the same here with this version 3.8 as well. And I also faced an issue with this screen on and off. I had set this screen lock time to 30 seconds so I faced this issue where screen was staying on and not turning off automatically. And there was also an issue with unlocking the device and sometimes what will happen is that screen will completely go dark and won't respond. Power button will not respond as well so the only solution is to restart the device. So these are some of the issues I faced with this ROM but other than that everything was pretty decent. Well let's hope that all these issues get fixed with the future updates. And to be frank this is the only custom ROM I enjoyed after Aero OS. I know that there are some issues with this but I still love this ROM. The overall aesthetics performance is very good and if you are planning to flash this ROM a clean flash is must. And I was also checking this telegram channel so they have recommended Orange Fox recovery for this build due to some F2FS compression issues. Well I would recommend using Orange Fox but you can still flash it successfully with TWRP like I did. But still to be on a safer side it is recommended to use Orange Fox. So this was the performance review of Cherish OS in Redmi Note 10 Pro and I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer your queries. And if you enjoyed this video, do consider giving your thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well. That would be really helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in my next video.